Recently, I kept hearing about this new revolutionary IDE that has built-in AI within it. It is called Cursor and you might know it as well. The key difference I heard about is its significantly improved and larger context awareness. This would make it far superior to the standard Copilot integration from within a typical editor. Basically, if Copilot only knows about the file you make it modify, Cursor knows about the entire application and can make Make changes impacting more files at once. Also, you can quickly add as context different files from your project when you talk with it. In this video, I will try to implement a project I had in mind for a while using this tool and by the end of it, you will see whether Cursor can skyrocket your startup progress and put your ideas into action or not. Let's get into it. Now, for a while, I've been having this problem about subtitling my videos. Of course, like any other programmer, I am lazy and did not want to do this by hand. Even if I would copy and paste from the script file to the subtitle caption in the video editor, matching their time intervals would still take a ton. Naturally, I began thinking about the idea of a simple web app where I could upload my video and based on its audio, it would output a .srt file with the subtitles and their timings. This way, all I would have left to do when video editing would be to take this file and import it into DaVinci Resolve. Job done and the AI does all the work for me. So I downloaded Cursor and started to test whether it could implement all this, at least to an MVP stage without much of my help. After describing my idea in detail, I asked ChatGPT to make a .cursor rules file for me, opened up the IDE, created the file there, gave it as context and asked to start coding. A misunderstanding that happened at this point was that ChatGPT wanted to go for a whisper API call in the backend once it received my video. With this speech recognition model being owned by OpenAI, of course these calls would cost money that I really didn't want to spend. After all, if I wanted to pay for this, I would have just got a subscription to an already existing web app out there that does this. So I tried for a while to set up an API key for free, at least for testing purposes, but did not manage to make it work. Before getting back to the video and showing you if this little project of mine ended up working out or not, I wanted to talk to you about how I used APIs in order to generate over $5,000 in the month of January. Companies, startups, and solo developers need them to save development time. Instead of building a feature from scratch, they'd rather just pay a small fee to access an existing API that does exactly what they need. Once you've built an API that solves a specific problem or provides a certain type of data, you can earn recurring revenue as companies and developers gradually integrate it to their own projects. Now, obviously, there's a right way and a wrong way to go about this. You need to pick a good niche that's on the come up, structure the endpoints of your API correctly, and know how to price it in a way that maximizes revenue, but is still a good deal for companies. It is not just about writing code, it's about understanding how to position it so that people actually want to pay for it. That's exactly why I put together a full course on this, where I break down everything from picking the perfect API idea to setting it up and getting your first paying user. It covers everything from the start, including what exactly is an API, so don't worry if you are a beginner. It also has a lot of free lessons in it to see if it's a good fit for you. So if you're interested, I'll leave the link to it first thing in the description down below. Now back to the project. I started to explain my problem to Cursor and oh boy did it come in clutch with a solution. It found this GitHub repo called whisper.cbp. After a bit of reading, this is a lightweight implementation of OpenAI's model in C++. It works for free and offline as well, because it is using your own computer resources for the AI computing that happens behind the scenes in order to turn the audio of the video file into actual text. So I git cloned the repo into my own project, downloaded the English model so it worked locally, and finally built the project. With it only accepting WAV files, I also had to install FFMPEG to convert my video from code before feeding it in. Then the code calls Whisper CLI with the arguments of the model that we downloaded and the converted WAV file. What is outputted is the text of my speech in a .srt file. 
file. With the backend logic out of the way, the frontend did not actually need anything fancy. If I'm ever to turn this into a startup, I will use a framework like React or Angular, but for the MVP this will most likely do. I did not specify any text tags for a cursor to use specifically, so it just stuck with plain JavaScript. It made a package.json file with the required dependencies and then wrote all the logic in two different folders, backend in the server directory and frontend in the client one. Now now what it didn't handle and still required some coding expertise was installing all the necessary package.json dependencies with npm install commands, including the whisper.cpp submodule in the project, setting up the GitHub repository and running the application on port 3000 with an npm run dev command. It could still describe to you the steps needed, but could not write these commands in the terminal for you as it did with the code. We can test it by giving the audio file of this video and see what exactly it outputs. Ok, so after running it, the file outputted is here, those seem to be my words broadly, let's import it in DaVinci now. And you can see that when I drag it over the timeline, the SRT file becomes bubbles of text with the right duration specified by the intervals. And yep, it works, you can probably see that since this entire video has been subtitled as well using this exact tool. Just in case you want to take a look at the code, I will leave it down below. Let me know in the comments what you think about it as well as your thoughts on this idea overall. Until next time, thanks for watching to the end and happy coding!